is up, App Nation. It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to growing your app downloads and obviously your revenue. And in part five, whew, can you believe it? Part five of this free ASO training, we're going to talk all about how do you optimize for the keywords in your app title, subtitle, keyword field, and so forth. So in our previous video, we showed you all the tools that we use to do keyword research and including building a brand and why it's so critical that you have to these days because it's so competitive, build a brand for your app. Now in this video, I want to show you how do you pull all the data, get the most accurate data, and then use that data to optimize your app store listing. So without further ado, let's get to it. So here's the app that we're going to be looking at. This is one of my apps and we're doing a lot of ASO tests. So I'm sure all of this is going to change as we, it keeps going forward, but this is the app that we did and I used all the tools. So what you want to do is put together a spreadsheet like this. Okay. Now this is my own patented spreadsheet. Okay. You're not going to find this anywhere else, but here's what we're doing. The key thing is to all the keywords you pulled in part three and four, of this series, you're going to then put them into an ASO tool. Now, the two that I recommend right now, AppRadar being one of them, I love them. They're so super affordable or mobile action. Now, because we're an agency, we like to use two different tools. If you're on an indie budget or startup budget, I would just pick one. I like AppRadar because the data is very accurate, but the price isn't as high. So it's great for startups out there. So that's what I personally prefer, but I like mobile action as well. So here I'm using both. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Now I have this filtered, so I'm going to show you all of this and this is our exact ASO. So as you can see, there's a ton of keywords that we pulled for this app over 210 keywords. Now what I do after I get this, my team puts this all together and these would be blank right now, but I would then sort and you can use sort by app radar, I start by the search traffic. Now, for those who aren't familiar, the, the reason why I have Spanish, Mexico, English keywords in the Spanish, Mexico localization is because the U S app store actually indexes that localization. So I want to put English keywords in here and here's what we're doing. We're sorting by search traffic. So I guess my team didn't pull this particular keyword. I think I added this in a later round, but I'm, I'm then looking at the search traffic and sorting by it and then kind of figuring out where I should be. Now here's the key part. You want 75% of your keywords to be high traffic, high competition keywords, and about 25% of those keywords to be lower competition, lower traffic keywords. If you're just starting out, you may want to shift that percentages a bit to more lower competition keywords, but I'm coming around because of all the different tricks and tools that I have in our arsenal to optimize for these keywords. I'm coming around and saying like, look, go after the high traffic, high competition keywords, because that's actually going to make a huge difference in your organic downloads. And if it sticks, man, you're going to get thousands of downloads a day. So I've come around to just focusing more of our efforts on the low competition, low traffic, and now on the higher traffic, higher competition keywords. Let's get back to the spreadsheet. So what I do after this is obviously sleep sounds is the big thing for me. So I'm going to focus on sleep sounds. I'm then looking through, given the data, I'm looking through which keywords I should target. Now you see X's. This is my process. I like to put X's around this target. What does this target column mean? Well, it just means I want to go after that keyword. Let me go back a little bit and explain all these things as after we pulled the data. So mobile action, Traffic, obvious. Chance is the likelihood you'll be in the top 10. App radar, traffic, obvious. Difficulty is obviously, that's pretty obvious. Keyword length, I just have that. I don't use it all the time, but it's just the length of the keyword. Apps is the number of apps that show up. And rank, if you're a new app, you won't have a rank for this. So you can put in any app into any of these tools and kind of get the data. But if you're already out there, you launch, then this is your current ranking for that keyword. All right. So that's what it is. I go in and depending on the chance and difficulty scores, I put X's around the keywords I want to target. All right. So let's say rain sounds. I do have rain sounds in the app, relax melodies, obviously sound machine. I want to do that. And I just go through. And so what I try to find is just high traffic keywords. Now the brand stuff that I talked about before, here's why I decided to call my app moonlight, because when I'm searching through this data, again, I didn't know, I actually did the ASO before 
while my developer was creating the app. So I wasn't entirely sure what I was gonna call the app yet. Okay, so I did that way before. Given all this, I was like, wow, this is the first keyword that actually has a good score. So it has really high traffic, right? We don't know what these traffic numbers mean. Facebook, Instagram, the very popular apps, they have close to 100. So we're not entirely sure how many downloads this traffic number is gonna to equate to, but obviously the higher, the better. So here's the first keyword that came in that had a good ring to it. I like it. I looked in the app stores. There weren't too many apps that were ranking for Moonlight that had really a grip hold on the app store. And so I was like, yeah, this is perfect, right? So that's why I decided to call my app Moonlight because that's my brand now, right? Moonlight. It's associated with sleep. And at the same time, the scores here are showing me that this is a great score, right? Good traffic, lower competition. And when these little highlights for me, I just have a conditional formatting. It just shows me if it's green, it's above 70 and it's lower traffic, how I term lower traffic. And if it's below 40, it's yellow. It's like mm, on the verge. If it's under 30, then it's very low traffic. The reason why I like using two different tools, you don't have to use two, but the reason why I like it is because if both tools are telling me it's lower competition, I'm gonna likely rank for that. And we are number five for Moonlight. I'm trying to get that higher, trying to get into that number one spot. And so I'll share with you how we've been able to do that. Cool. All right. Again, these are ease. This was another term that I thought about in terms of potentially for my brand. But you're gonna go ahead and depending on, I just go X's, X's, X's. This is things I wanna target. So go through this really quick and just put X's around all this stuff. And so what else you can do is after I've done that, I even do this. So I'm gonna filter first and foremost off of X's. What I also like to do is sort by the chance scores. Now mobile action, what I found is gonna show me more keywords that are lower competition, whereas App Radar doesn't show that many. Now, which ones have been correct, which ones haven't, that's still up in the air for me. I haven't done a granular look at the two, but what I found is mobile action's a lot more relax maybe in their competition. And so I like just sorting by that for now, all right? So reset, that was a good one. So that's why I had reset in here because it obviously makes sense. So I was like, all right, that's, that makes sense. Rachel Ray, maybe not that refresh. Okay, interesting. Let me think through that. So I just sort through that and then kind of figure out because it was going to be a new app that I wanted to really focus more on the lower competition keywords in the subtitle while still going after the higher competition keywords, okay? So I'm starting to then, because I've now sorted all the keywords with the X, I'm then starting to think through, okay, where should this keyword be? And so this is why you see US subtitle. It's like, because I used it there. So if I use it anywhere, then I'm gonna put it in the title, short title, so I'll just show you like where it is. And then if it's X, means things, I just didn't get to it, right? Maybe just didn't fit for what I was trying to do. So, I will sort by traffic again, and you can see, I'm like, okay, well, Sleep Sounds, definitely, it's in the US title, I want that in there. I definitely want Moonlight, that's gonna be my brand name now, moving forward, that's in the US title. Manifestation, I was like, ah, it's not hugely important for what I do, but the traffic scores, the difficulty scores are great, and the traffic score is great, that I put it in the Spanish Mexico, and I'm gonna figure out like if this is worth continuing to optimize for. And don't pay attention to the ranks because my team just used a previous app that I had as the ranks. So don't worry about that too much. Night Owl, great. So these are the things that you start looking for, right? You wanna try to find good high traffic keywords and start optimizing for it. And I like to filter it just so I can see, get a sense of the difficulty. If it's green, like, okay, go after it, see if it's, if it's yellow, it's like right on the verge. And then you can also do difficulty here by App Radar. And I do that a little bit more often because mobile action, I know a lot of keywords are gonna be lower difficulty. So I then say, okay, app rate, are you telling me? And then if both tools are telling me low competition, then I'm gonna really, really go after that particular keyword. A couple of key things I wanna point out. I already referred to the Spanish Mexico. I have English in there. Notice that I have actually different title, app name, and different subtitle in both localizations because I wanna target the English speaking US market. Right? So I'm using that Spanish Mexico, I'm not putting Spanish in there, I'm using English. I lost the brand in the Spanish Mexico because I don't 
I want to really focus on sounds to sleep, right? That's the keyword I want to really go aggressively after. So I lost my branding. I didn't care about the market as much. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go straight for it. Now, if you care about your branding, you can leave it in there. Hasn't made a huge impact in terms of keyword rankings, in my opinion, anymore. It's just up to personal preference. The other thing that I like to try to do too is the US keywords that I might be using that I really wanna optimize for, I end up repeating them in the Spanish Mexico subtitle. I have run a test that if I double up, it actually helps me. I haven't done run a test where if I'm using it in Spanish Mexico subtitle, but I remove it from the US keyword field, does it hurt me? I will run that test and report back to you, but that's just something to be aware about. And then the keyword tool or the Spanish Mexico keyword field, it's completely new, right? You don't have to repeat anything. If the singular is there, you don't have to have the plural most times. You can test that. I have tested it with different keywords and it doesn't make a huge difference. You also do not, and kind of refer this back in another video, but you do not want to put spaces in between the keywords. So if you have cricket, put it in there and you put it space. A few things I'm also testing is the order of the keywords. Does it impact your rankings? Like, am I going to get a higher rank for cricket versus fan because cricket is up front and center? I don't know to be true or not yet. I'm running some tests, but things that you want to test. But those are the things that I want to highlight to you, right? Really try to have the higher traffic keywords in the beginning, no matter what the competition is in your title. All right, in your subtitle, you're gonna A-B test. Now I've already optimized it. As you guys can see, this was the first round. I've now changed things around based on the data that I have post-launch and I'm gonna keep switching them around. So I would recommend that you update this at least once a month. And if you don't have a new build ready, just submit the old, same code with, that's what we did. And then go from there, right? Like it doesn't really matter. So at least once a month, do this, try out new keywords, use all the tools that I referenced in video three to find out even new keywords to be like, what else can I explore? Cause after a while this gets like, okay, I've already put it here, right? Like I've already put it in the U S title, which is the main spot and I can't grow keyword rankings. Well, maybe try a different keyword. It is about that. And the last thing I want to point out is Continue to optimize your product, your retention, your conversion rate, because as you continue to tweak that product, the better your numbers become from a retention and monetization standpoint, the better your keyword rankings are going to be, especially on the Google Play side, because Google understands all this stuff. They're from this. They're big data guys, right? Whereas iOS, you're starting to see inklings of it, but not super aggressive yet. But at the same time, it is important, right? So. I wouldn't say it's hugely important yet on the iOS side, but it will become important later on as they get more and more data and they get more sophisticated that your revenues, your retentions all gonna tie in to your keyword rankings. All right guys, that's it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, how you like to do keyword research, how you like to optimize for your particular keywords. And if you're using this spreadsheet, well, let me know about that as well. I don't have access to this. There's no public file of this spreadsheet, but if you are within the App Masters Academy, you do have access to my handy dandy template, but it's something that you can build on your own. It's not hugely sophisticated, guys. All right, in our last video, part six of six, we're almost done with this free training. We're gonna talk about all the ways that you can increase your downloads without touching your keywords. So super important, something that you wanna continually be A-B testing, look out for part six, that's coming up soon. And we've seen some tremendous results, like double the downloads, not even touching the keywords, just optimizing for these few areas that I'll share with you in part six of this free ASO training. I am Steve P. Young on all your social media platforms. So follow me there if you wanna get the insights on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, Steve P. Young, or follow at Masters on Facebook as well. And go check out our website and our free training by going to appmasters.com, you can get our free training that walks you through how to build a profitable app business. All right, until next time, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that critical video six, and I'll see you on the next video.